Today in the Physics Funhouse, we are investigating magnetism. You probably already know that magnets can be used to attract metal objects. Magnet, metal object, you can use it to pick up things like paper clips, roll ball bearings or cloth slab tables, and even pick up coins. <clears throat> and even pick up coins. Wait. <clears throat> And even pick up coin. Okay, so maybe magnets don't attract all metals. Um, this one attracts many metals very well, but not these coins for some um, reason. And the reason is, is that uh, magnets don't attract metal. Magnets have an effect on other things that are ferromagnetic. Iron being a really good example. And so things that are made of iron, like paper clips and ball bearings, will be attracted to magnets. But things that are not made out of iron, things that are made out of mainly copper and mainly nickel, um, will not be attracted to a magnet. So the first thing we have to understand about magnetism is that not all materials are affected equally by magnetism. And to really understand magnetism, we're going to have to go back into a lot of chemistry. Chemistry which may seem kind of weird and scary to you. So let's start investigating like magnetic fields and what they actually are and what they actually do. Um, I showed you a couple different kinds of magnets. This is a simple bar magnet, and this one is a horseshoe magnet. The first thing to kind of understand about a magnet is that it always has two ends, and the ends are opposites of each other and just like we learned about electric charges the rule that opposites attract and likes repel will hold true and so one end of this horseshoe magnet will attract one end of this other magnet the other end will repel it just like that the end that repels this end of the magnet should attract the other end and so on this magnet, if I know that this is a north pole, then this must be a south pole. But how do I actually know that these are north and south poles? How can I more carefully investigate magnetic fields? The tool that we use to investigate magnetic fields is a compass. And all that a compass is is a really, really tiny magnet on a very low friction um, bearing that allows it to like kind of spin around. Normally, that thing would just align itself in the biggest magnetic field that is currently surrounding it, which is the magnetic field due to the Earth. And so right now, this compass needle is pointing this direction, which indicates that that direction is north. So, just like all magnets, a compass needle has two ends. One that is a north pole, and the other that is a south pole. If I were to introduce another magnet to the region around this compass, you'll notice that the compass needle is moving, even though you can't see the magnet. There it is. Um, you'll notice that it follows this end of the magnet around, but if I switch it, now the other end is following the magnet around just like that. And so the first thing that might surprise you is that the north end of the compass needle is pointing towards the south pole of this magnet, which, well, it shouldn't surprise you because this is the north pole of this magnet. It would point towards the opposite or south pole of the other magnet. So what we typically refer to as the north pole of the earth, which is what this is pointing towards, is really the north seeking pole of the earth. So fun fact, the North Pole with the Earth, like in Canada, where Santa Claus lives, is actually a mag magnetic South Pole, like this right here. So to find the direction of the magnetic field in the region surrounding a magnet, such as this one right here, we use a compass. And the magnetic field is defined as the direction that the north end of a compass points. And so the red needle on my compass is the north end. So at this position right here, that needle is basically pointing to the left. And so I'm just going to kind of keep track of that like that. By the way, if you like a symbol for the magnetic field, the symbol we use is a capital B. And since it's a vector, it's got direction, we put the vector sign above it. Um, we'll get into a little bit later on, you know, more of the mathematics and symbols, but just so that you know right off the bat. Moving my compass needle over here, notice that it kind of points more up and to the left. Kind of like that. 
Moving over there, notice it points down and to the left, kind of like that. Moving it over here, notice that it points directly away from this end of the magnet. This end of my magnet is the North Pole. And so at this position over here, the magnetic field is directly away from it. This position over here, it's directly towards it. So in both cases, that's to the right. If I kind of do a little bit over here, just moving from the North Pole over to the South Pole, notice that I kind of get this same kind of shape where I make almost like a loop going from one end to the other. And so often what we do instead of drawing individual vectors is we kind of sort of draw like a loop with arrows indicating the direction like that. Now, if I were to take my compass and put it inside the magnet, which I can't really do, I can't really melt the magnet, what we would notice is the compass would just line up with the rest of the magnet. And so you can kind of sort of think about this magnet as being a bunch of little magnets all pointed in that direction. And so the magnetic field inside the magnet would simply close off those loops. The magnetic field around a magnet always forms closed loops, kind of like what I've drawn here. So one way to get a better understanding of what the actual magnetic field looks like, rather than just putting a compass at a bunch of different points, is to cover the magnet with a piece of paper and then sprinkle some iron filings on top of that piece of paper. The iron filings will line up with the magnetic field and give us a good picture of what the magnetic field looks like. So I'm just going to sprinkle some of these on there. The trick is to basically pretend that you're salting the piece of paper like you would salt a steak before you put it on the grill. And yes, you do need to salt your steaks before you put them on the grill. And so when we kind of look at the pattern that the iron filings created, you notice these real nice loops. You can't really tell which direction they're going, but you can tell that they are closed loops. So if you follow these lines around, you get really nice closed loops. The piece of paper is necessary so that when you're done, you can just pick it up like that, and you don't have a bunch of iron filings stuck to your magnet. So here's our horseshoe magnet. It's got one pole being the North Pole, one pole being the South Pole. Place our sheet of paper over it. So notice that in between the poles of our horseshoe magnet, we get these really nice lines going from one side to the other. Um, Notice that those lines, if they were allowed to, they clump on the edges of the magnet. Um, kind of see the loops over here would continue through the magnet back to the other side. So they still form closed loops just like they did before. That's just instead of a bar shape, that bar is basically bent into a horseshoe shape like that. So for the longest time, those magnetic materials, um, which are naturally found in some rocks, um, were thought to be just special to those particular materials. And in order to really understand magnetism, we really have to understand the chemistry of those materials. But for the longest time, it was just a curiosity. Like it was a useful tool for picking up pieces of metal and hanging things on other metal objects, but there wasn't really anything scientifically meaningful to the idea of a permanent magnet. Until this little discovery um, by a guy named Orsted. And what Orsted noticed is that when he had a compass, like this one, next to a wire with current in it, this does not have current in it yet, but it will in just a second, the current carrying wire deflected the compass needle. And so we're only gonna turn this on for just a second because we don't want it to get too hot. But he noticed that when he created a current in that wire, the compass needle was deflected by just a little bit. Now that's a pretty good current because I've got simply a paper clip connected to about two and a half volt battery. 
um, and it deflects that compass angle just a little bit. So I really cannot use the magnetic field created by this current carrying wire to do anything real useful, like pick up a paper clip just yet. The trick is we need more wires and we need more current. So the way that we can get a larger current and more wires to create a bigger magnetic field would be to take our wire, like this one right here, and then just loop it up a bunch of times and so that we get the same wire um, bunched together like this basically a dozen times or so. And so this is just one long wire continuously wrapped around this little cart here. And then it's connected to two battery emulators, both of which are going to be set to 15 volts, which will give me the maximum of two amperes of current coming from both of them for a total of four amperes of current. So four amperes of current times 12 will give me a really big magnetic field, hopefully. Okay, so you can see the compass needle right now is pointing to the right and just a tad bit up um, towards the top of the screen. What we're going to do now is turn on the current and the big giant arrow behind the wire indicates the direction of the current. The current should be going up and let's observe what happens to that compass needle after I turn on the current. So in three, two, one, go. So you notice when I turn on the current that now the compass needle points almost directly upwards. And if I move the compass needle carefully around this wire, notice that the compass needle is constantly changing direction. So like right here, the compass needle is pointing to our left. Over here, the compass needle is pointing down the screen. If I can kind of get it oriented over here, the compass needle was pointing basically straight to the right. And so hopefully what you kind of notice is that the magnetic field makes a circle around that wire. Turning current on in three, two, one. So hopefully we notice that everywhere around the wire, the compass needle basically points perpendicular to the wire, it makes a circle going around the wire kind of like this. If I were to reverse the direction of the current, which I can do by turning off the current and then switching the leads. So if I reverse the leads for my battery so that the positive in the battery is connected in the other other side of the wire. Now the current is going to be going down and so we should see the same effect. We should see a circular magnetic field around the wire but just in the opposite direction. So now my compass needle still points perpendicular to the wire, just in the opposite direction that it did before. So there's a real simple rule for figuring out the direction of the magnetic field around a current carrying wire. And to do that, all you need is your hand, specifically your right hand. Got to make sure you're doing this with your right hand because your right and left hand are mirror images of each other. And so if you point your thumb in the direction of the current and then hold your fingers like you're holding a cup, your fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic field. So in this case, my thumb points upwards. My current was moving up through the wire. I curl my fingers like I'm holding a cup, and then everywhere my fingers are relative to the wire, they should be pointing in the direction of the magnetic field. And so to the right of the wire, where my compass was over here, the magnetic field points this direction. So my thumb upwards, my fingers curl in that direction. Behind the wire, if I turn my hand now so that my fingers are behind the wire, they curl towards your left, which is the direction the compass needle is pointing. If I come in front of the wire, I just move my fingers 
that they're in front of the wire and they curl in the direction of the magnetic field. So anywhere I curl my hand, my fingertips point in the direction of the magnetic field. So while the magnetic field that I create when I switch this current on is big enough to affect the compass needle and make the compass needle point directions, it's still really not big enough to affect any like large object like a paper clip. Um, so in order to get an even larger magnetic field, the trick is to get these wires still like wrapped around like this closer together. The closer together the wires get, the stronger the magnetic field should be. So the other thing we could do to make that magnetic field due to current carrying wire even stronger is to coil the wire up into a nice tight coil like this one. So this is connected to a single battery eliminator which will give it a current of about 2 amperes, a maximum current of about 2 amperes. So now when I switch this thing on and run a really large current through that, now this thing will be strong enough to pick up magnets and things like that. The magnetic field still only exists though when the current is turned on. When I turn the current off, the magnetic field ceases to exist. Paper clips fall out. I can make that even stronger by introducing something made of iron, like a big iron nail, to the center of my coil. And so if I put that guy in there, even sticking out a little bit, by turning on the current now, now that piece of iron also becomes magnetized because it is made of iron, a ferromagnetic material, in a magnetic field. And putting iron inside of there actually makes the magnetic field stronger because there's more things to become magnetized. And so when I turn the power off, that iron is now kind of slightly turned into a permanent magnet, just a little bit. And the same thing is actually true of our paper clips. If I were to bring our compass back in the picture, these paper clips are actually slightly magnetized now by being in that strong magnetic field. And so the things we should notice at this point, number one is that magnets are not simple. Number two, that the direction of a magnetic field can be determined by using a compass, the north end of the compass. Um, gives us the direction of the magnetic field. Number three, a current carrying wire will create a magnetic field. We can make that field stronger by introducing more wire, um, looping the wire in a tighter so that they're closer together loop, and then increasing the current would increase the magnetic field as well. In our next video, we're going to get into the specifics of magnetism, how things like iron paper clips can become permanently magnetized and why. I'll see you then. Ta-ta.